Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great. And for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. Today we're going to kick off with our week three analysis, team analysis, uh, the, the Southwest Score Bunnies. If I move out the way, you can you can see there's the, the pretty logo and our team um, in the background because I've got my green screen up, so I need to do something. Uh, but our week three preparation for uh, a match against Joel, the New York Oblivion. Um, so... As we're going into week three, our record at the minute is 1-1. Uh, Poker Alex, week one, we lost two. And then we had Jin, week two, uh, we managed to eke out the win, which was amazing. So we're 1-1. Uh, week three, not getting any easier, going up against Joel, uh, and it's going to be uh, insanely hard. Uh, if you've missed any of the the, the the content that we've done so far, want to catch up with how we're getting on, where the team, the draft, and things like that all started from, I'll link the playlist up in the top right corner. You can check that out do after this video though so we're gonna get into it today uh let's go across <clears throat> to this screen where we can see joe's team so new york oblivion uh as we all know joe is an incredible player so that already makes it super difficult super difficult to start off with but he had an amazing draft as well, uh, an, an, an incredible draft. So, uh, as you can see, getting his tier one picks in Cinero and Mungus, like super staples in any sort of VG format, gives him a lot of room to kind of support, disrupt, slow the game down if he needs to. Uh, and then we've got the High Dragon and the Gigalith, uh, followed up by the Jellison Klefki, um, the Rotom Fan. We need to update this because the Rotom Fan is not anymore. He switched out Rotom Fan and uh, the Diggers B for uh, Kanto, Sandslash, and Gotharita. So uh, then we go down to Tapulele, another great free pick, uh, the Bravery and a Selgo. So let's go through the team. What are the threats? Big threats are he's obviously got a good Trick Room mod. He's got the Gigalith uh, there to perform super well under Trick Room. He's got the Gotharita as well that can trap, set up the Trick Room as well. Um, uh, Gigalith probably the best Pokemon under Trick Room, uh, along with the Amoongus. That board position is something we've got to be very scared of. Um, obviously, we've got good Trick Room mods ourselves, obviously with the, the Torkoal mod, Rhyperia as well. Definitely helps us out, threatens kind of both of those if you've got the board position out. So uh, the Trick Room isn't the worst thing for us. Um, and then other mods that he's got, obviously the Tapu Lele with the Acel Goal. Uh, the Unburden there, going to be a pain. Uh, Final Gambit as well, something that we need to watch out for because it can just get rid of something very early on. Um, and then the Bravery. Obviously, we've got Double Intimidate in our team, so we need to be watching out for that. Uh, bravery in its, its own right, a very good Dynamax Pokemon, going to provide Airstream support for the rest of his team. Uh, Klefki as well, Prankster Pokemon. And then the Hydreigon, kind of an all-round Pokemon with the Tapulele. Kind of got to watch out because we don't want to get ourselves into a situation where Gotharita's out in the field and Joe's able to get these, these specific big sweepers in next to it and kind of trap us in and remove threats. So... It's a really solid team overall. I uh, I think it's probably one of the better drafts, in all honesty. I think his switches that he's made to the Sand Slash and Gotharita are really nice. He's got that kind of Sand uh, Rush ability there with the, the Kanto Sand Slash that works with the Gigalith. Like an auto-fast mode as well, which is amazing. Um, so there's lots to kind of consider here. Um, so let's jump over into Showdown. And here we are. Here's the team that I have prepared this week coming into it. And it is, <clears throat> I feel <clears throat> like, I don't know, like, am I being brave or if I'm being really ridiculously stupid with this team? But for some reason, I feel like I have to be kind of, I have to just go like, and kind of think outside the box, outside the box, outside the box, and just so so far outside the box that Joe's just not going to know what what's going on with this team at all. And I feel a little bit like that myself. But I do believe in the build and the concept. There is some logic behind the madness here. So Persimian, um, obviously Joe has got Intimidate with the Incineroar, so we can take advantage of that. If not anything else, it can kind of put a lot of pressure on a lot of his Pokemon. You know, he's got uh, things like the, the, the Tapu Lele are going to threaten us really, really hard. Uh, but this Persimian with the Assault Vest, as long as we're maxed, even a Specs, Psychic in the terrain, we'll be able to take that with this spread. 
pick up a knockout and return with the iron head um <clears throat> the knockoff's quite good utility obviously we've got to watch out for that bravery as well which can cause us all sorts of issues um but in general persimian going to be really good utility going to be able to suck up those those special attacks with the assault vest and dish out a lot of damage and also at the same time provide speed control with the acrobatics and then kind of just punish if we can get those knockoffs kind of gone um onto the other side of the field i guess and then we move on to the star of the show choice scarf azumarill so i'm just going to pull joe's team back up now if you look at the speed tiers of joe's entire team nothing hits above 98 or 97 i'm pretty sure it's 98 high dragon right so we've got nothing faster than that on the on his team 85 80 uh the cell goal is the exception obviously with the unburdened but there's we can't physically outspeed that uh with a raw stat sand slash is another one with the gigalith of course that's going to be a bit of an issue as well but sand slash i don't know if i'm like super worried about sand slash to be honest maybe i should be maybe that'll come back to bite me but the the, the fact is the azumarill with a scarf um can outspeed everything on his team so it, it hits his team speed stat as base 100 max speed pokemon so um, what we've done with Azumarill, I was thinking like Tapu Lele with its terrain is going to be a really annoying, really annoying. We don't have a, a way to kind of set up our own terrain without attacking. So I was like, ah, oh, Azumarill gets Steel Roller, gets rid of terrain, hits super hard um, and hits the Tapu Lele for amazing damage. So we've got a way to one shot Tapu Lele with Azumarill. We've got a one way to one shot Hydreigon with, with Azumarill. Obviously got to watch out for Intimidate support from Incineroar. But if we've got Persimian next to Azumarill, we don't need to worry about it too much, do we? Um, and then the other two moves are Sulk and Fake Tears. And these are primarily to support, obviously the Sulk supports Jolteon and Venusaur, like super well. Um, and then the Fake Tears, again, will support Jolteon and Venusaur, but more so the Jolteon. So this Azumarill is, uh, outspeeds Jolteon by one speed stat. So we've got quite a bulky Jolteon. And again, for the same reasons, I don't need to go like super fast with Jolteon because the, the, the majority of Joe's team are not going to be able to uh, hit that benchmark anyway. So we're going to outspeed everything hit that 167 just under speed the azumarill so we can get that kind of sulk combination off with the jolteon if we want to or fake tears off with the azumarill and then like nuke it with something like rising voltage now i've went for safety goggles here on jolteon because one of the combinations i could see us having issues with of course is going to be that bravery and the amoongus um and jolteon in that situation not going to really have a great time it's just going to get hit by bravery attacks uh it can airstream in front of us do all, whatever it wants pretty much but this way with the safety goggles and obviously azumarill as well with the the sap sipper we'll be able to ignore the rage powder from the amoongus um and get that fake tears onto the bravery and then smack it with a, a max lightning uh which is the idea behind it we've got sunny day as well as kind of another option on jolteon it gives us a way to get rid of the sand or um, other weather that might pop up that could be a little bit um annoying to deal with and also then that helps us kind of set up the venusaur if we want again jolteon gonna outspeed the majority of everything unless we see a stray scarf the only issue with <clears throat> jolteon in this team is that it's probably one of the only pokemon that we've got access to that can't hit at hp stat to take a final gambit so final gambit from a cell goal will be able to take jolteon down so it'll be a trade one for one uh azumarill um i think a cell goal hits 187 hp stat uh, or 189 i believe i think it's the same as venusaur uh yeah 187 i think um which we should probably change that Although I can't because I've already done the team. Um, okay, 187. So Jolteon can't. Final Gambit, we're going to be a little bit subjected to that. Uh, it makes it a little bit difficult. Um, but Jolteon, in a lot of ways, is going to be really good against Joe's team. You know, it hits a Jellison for great damage. Um, it's a Bravery for very good damage. You've got the Shadow Ball there, which can kind of cover the Tapu Lele or the Jellison. If we can't get that kind of Sock or Fake Tears combination off, um, but that will allow Jolteon to be a lot more offensive you know and the, the vault absorb there is really nice because the cleft key predominantly going to be either setting up screens or thunder wave and stuff you would imagine so um at least with the vault absorb we can kind of get around that to a certain extent 
Um, so that is that. Then we'll move on to the Venusaur here. Now, Venu, I do feel like it's going to be really useful, maybe late game. Um, and if we can kind of resist pulling the trigger early on with a, a, a Dynamax or a Gigantamax, then Venusaur can be a really good late game Pokemon, especially if we can get the, the Sunny Day up to override any, any sand that's potentially on the field. And then that'll just allow Venusaur to be in a, in a great position. I've opted not to go for Sleep Powder. It seems a little bit strange, but I think that Protect's a lot more valuable. And I really do need all of these uh, attacks, I think, to hit everything on Joe's on Joe's team. We're going to need the Earth Power for Incineroar, Sludge Bomb for Amoongus, for the Tapu Lele. So we, we kind of need all of that coverage. The um, the 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 Cobra Berry as well gives us a little bit of protection, uh, a little extra protection against the Bravery, uh, which I feel a little bit more vulnerable against than I do against the Tapu Lele, where I feel like Azumarill is just the best counter that we've got to, to Tapu Lele. Straight out, knocks it out with that Steel Roller. So we don't need to worry about that too much. Um, and obviously with uh, something like uh, the Jellicent that gets that Sap Strength, uh, it will only power up uh, Azumarill as well. Uh, so, yeah, I think we could have went down a different route with Azumarill. We could have went for a Belly Drum route, but I feel like it's really predictable. Um, and it's something that John might protect, predict and prepare for. Okay, so that's the Venusaur. It's pretty straightforward, pretty bulky. Um, it will be able to act in Trick Room as well. If we, if we, if we, if the Trick Room goes up, it's not going to be a preferable way to play in this game, which makes a little bit you know i think i think we're better out of trick room than we are in trick room um and then that moves on to riperia obviously the big thing that threatens riperia is going to be the jellicent um i think more more so than anything else now i did think about running thunder punch here but i think the fact that klefki and i could see klefki come to this match and setting up screens and that could be really obnoxious for us to deal with i thought brick break might be a better utility for us um it also helps us hit something like hydreigon for a little bit better damage as well um and the pasha berry there just to give us a little bit of staying power against the jellicent you can maybe see a combination of like airstream and water spout come out it just gives us a little bit of solidarity there um so yeah max speed riperia should allow us to get the jump on things like Incineroar um, and obviously the Gigalith, uh, the, the Gothrita, um, and that's probably about it outside of like Amoongus. Um, so yeah, but I mean, max speed makes sense because we don't want to get in part and shot if we can help it. Um, and then we move on to the final member of the team, Mimikyu. I think Mimikyu is going to be amazing here. Now, again, I haven't opted for Trick Room, opted for Taunt. I think Joe's going to prepare for that, but Taunt still going to be a valuable option. I think the Safeguard is going to be the best option for us as well. It seems a little bit strange, but I think particularly against this team, you've got Amoongus with Spore. You're going to have Gotharita with potentially um, Hypnosis. Uh, you're going to have Klefki with Thunder Wave. There's lots of potential status effects that could, could kind of be coming out from from um from joe's team so i think the safeguard protects pretty much everything um make sure that persimian doesn't get thunder waved either way um and and nothing gets put to sleep as well obviously we've got the immunity there already with with azumarill um but we don't have the immunity against hypnosis which mimikyu can do and the safeguard at least gets around mental herbs you know we just set that up and we're kind of we're safe so uh the the rest of the set shadow claw and play rough with the life orb max speed max attack pretty straightforward we just want to be making sure if we are hitting things like how dragon we're getting a knockout things like tapalele we're getting a knockout things like bravery we're doing good damage to um and things like jellicent you know we're not we're having to play that two turn waiting game with the the phantom force and we can just go for that shadow claw and just get some big damage onto the field again it is going to be a little bit subjected to things like intimidate from the incineral but at the same time if we can position like persimian well enough on the field and kind of protect it as well because like if we've got azumarill persimian out we've got the protection against the tapu Lele. we don't really worry about it too much and the same can be said for the mimikyu persimian as well we've got that protection from the Tapu Lele uh, where we were going to be able to knock it out and then Persimian can be kind of freed up to do what it wants. There is the, the argument and I did think about this a lot of gone Will-O-Wisp on Mimikyu because then it, um, it does allow us to get something like uh, the Bravery, uh, Burn It, Shut It Down, same can be said with the Sand Slash and the Gigalith um, but 
I kind of felt like Lumberry's going to be a, a really, really obvious thing that Joe will probably play in the bravery. So rather than waste that slot, we could take maybe some t time to either switch our board position up in a, an awkward position or just start getting damage on the board because I think that's going to be so important. And if we can now damage them, obviously we're going to win the game. So that is the aim of the game. Um, so that's the team in a nutshell. I know this isn't the longest episode um, at all, but I'm due to play Joe on like couple of minutes so I wanted to actually do this video before I did um, the match because if I play the match and it goes terribly I'm gonna have a different outlook on the team aren't I and the same can be said if I win the match so I'd rather come into this kind of like un 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 influenced so to speak so um, as I say keep an eye out for the match when we're drawing it and when we throw it up I will talk with Joe see when he wants to put it up but uh, I will put this up probably tonight or early tomorrow morning just so you've got an overview of the team selection and uh, touching base and things like that and I'm in the process of working on a backroom staff as well so we're gonna have a few more friends join us for these videos which will make it a little bit more fun and we'll be able to do a little bit longer of a section talking about uh, the team Teams, how the draft's going in general and some ideas around how to prepare because at the minute with the amount of time we've got um, right now I'm kind of just having to throw these teams together with ideas that I've got behind the scenes where it'd be nice to kind of come on and do it together and put the team together as we go and um, so hope you've enjoyed today's episode thank you so much friends for tuning in i know it's been a bit of a waffle all the way through but um hopefully you have enjoyed the concept behind the team and i hope you enjoy this week's episode so keep an eye out for it and uh, i'll catch you very soon with that episode of the draft league versus joe the new york oblivion Take care of yourselves, friends, more important than anything, and I'll see you all very soon. So until then, take care. Bye-bye.